Hello and welcome to Curtis Stage Tutorials. Today we're going to talk about compression for the web as part one of this Photoshop tutorial. Um, compression for the web is important, of course, for images that are going to go on a website. So let's open up a photo in Photoshop. I have a PSD here that I'm going to open in Photoshop. And this photo is a fairly large photo, so we'll look at the size of it first. If I go up to the top bar in Photoshop and go to Image, Image Size, you can see that I have a 28 megabyte image, and its pixel dimension width is 3648. So uh, obviously on a website this image is going to be too large to put on any website. In fact, it's too large for my screen itself. Uh, it would be way bigger than my, my uh, laptop screen. Uh, which is 1440 pixels wide. So it's obviously going to, the whole image itself would be bigger than my entire website if I kept the pixel dimension the way it was. So what we want to really do is we want to, part one of this compression is to knock this image size down. And we can do it here if we want to. Uh, if we do it here, we want to make sure that all three of these buttons down here are checked scale styles, constraint proportions and resample the image. And we've got different settings right in here. Um, and the, if I'm making something smaller, by cubic sharper is the best one for that. So I'm gonna be doing this one if I'm gonna shrink down an image in pixel dimensions. So an average size for an image on the internet is about 650 pixels wide for, let's say, a gallery image. And you notice that because constraint proportions was checked, when I put 650 wide right here in the width, the height went with it. So the height changed as the width changed. Watch that again. If I change this to 900, let's say, you can see that the uh, height changed with it. So let me change it back to 650. And my height changes. And then I can click OK to that. Now, that's one way to do it. That's the first step in compression is to change the image size. But I'm going to undo that and I'm going to go to File, Save for Web and Devices. Click that open and I'm going to get a dialog box. Now this is a large image so it's saying, hey, do you really want to open this up? Yes. So if this came off, let's say my digital camera would be in the same boat. Now my picture is too big for this display here for Save for Web. And you'll notice I've got three, uh, two buttons right here that are original, the optimized, but I like this two up tab here. It's gonna show me my original on the top and my compressed or optimized, as Photoshop likes to call it, on the bottom. Let me zoom out, Command minus, so I can see my image. And the goal of this two up window is to compare and contrast the top, which is the original PSD, there's the 28 megabytes, with the bottom, which if I do no size reduction, I've already knocked this down using JPEG compression down to 3.8 megabytes. Well, it's still not big, enough, it's still too big for the web. So I'm gonna knock this down even more. Let's look down here, the area that we were just in back in Photoshop, if I up on image and image size, that same dialog box is right here at the bottom down here. So first thing I'm gonna do is change this to by cubic sharper when I'm going down in size. I'm gonna change my width right here to 650. I could also do it by percentage. You'll see that right here, and I could slide that up or down via percentage. Um, but I like to put an exact height. Let me zoom in, Command Plus. And my goal now is to start looking at the difference between the top and the bottom here in quality of image. I'm looking at the edges of the image to see if they're looking too pixelated. Okay, so one thing I want to do is I want to click here, and I've got choices in terms of uh, the color profile, I've got the no color management, I've got monitor color, I've got internet standard RGB. Notice none of them are getting real, real close to my, yeah, no, none of them are getting real close. I'm going to take off the convert to RS, uh, sRGB so that they're equal. Sometimes you just have to watch this. Sometimes this having this on works better. Sometimes having it off works. My monitor is Adobe 1998 color profile. So having this convert to sRGB is not a good idea. And sRGB refers to the color space that this image is. So does Adobe 1998. We'll get to that on another tutorial. 
So now I have a choice. I've got this down. I just knocked it down 650 wide. Notice how the height went with it. And my JPEG size over here is, is 157K. Now there's 1000K in one megabyte. So I'm down here to 157K. That's getting pretty good. Um, you'll notice back in the old days on the 56K dial-up, that image would take 29 seconds to load in a web browser. So obviously those days are long gone, but um, we still want to get this as small as we can, especially for mobile uh, viewing when people are viewing on their mobile phones. So what I want to do is I want to go up here. I've got some choices. GIF or GIF, as some people like to say, is 256 colors or less. You'll notice that right here. And I don't use GIF too much anymore. This is, uh, you'll see what happens to it. When I zoom on the image, it really, since my color space is very limited, it looks very pixelated. Now this may be something you might want to do for style uh, and have fun with it, but I rarely use this on the internet anymore. Uh, we've got the choice of a JPEG and PNGs. Now let me talk about JPEG first. That's the most common one. And I've got a quality slider. I, let me take this down to zero so you can see um, yeah, I can get this down to 13 kilobytes, which is very, very small, but look how pixelated it is. Obviously, comparing the top to the bottom, that's not good. So my goal is to take this quality slider and slide it to the right until the two images look very similar. So I'm going to go here maybe to 90, and right around there, I can't tell much of a difference between the two images, and I'm zoomed way in. If I zoom out, I definitely can't tell any loss in image quality. But my size is 162K, which is pretty big. So let me pull back just a little bit, maybe with this image to 70, and see if that can that can work. And my I'm at 76K, and this probably I could probably get away with this image being that size uh, in terms of kilobytes. The quality won't be too bad. Of course, when I zoom way in, I can see some differences between the two. But when I zoom out, pretty pretty equal. Okay, my other choice in here would be a PNG 8 or PNG 24. Forget WBMP, we're not going to ever use that. PNG 8 would be somewhat like a GIF. Um, it's 256 colors or less. PNG 24, we'd only use if we're doing an image with the transparency. So this is going to become important in other tutorials where you're slicing buttons out, let's say, for, for your web design layout. Uh, you may want to have transparencies for those buttons, so the buttons look like they're free-floating in your layout. So that's when I'd use PNG24. So for the most part, most images that are on your site um, that are sitting in content boxes, usually or galleries, are going to be JPEGs. PNG24 only comes in handy, really, with web layout, um, design layouts. So logos that you want to see through the background and such like that. All right, so we've got this. We've got it to the size we want. We're going to click Save. And now we're going to save this to our web folder. So you want to go pick your web folder on your, um, on your hard drive or on our shared drive if you're working on campus. And this will go into your images folder. You just click save and it'll hang out in that folder as a JPEG. Now you're back to your original PSD. Usually what I do is I close that and I don't save it if I don't want to um, if I don't want any uh, changes to be made on the image, I say don't save, and then there we go. We're done with image compression. First, step one is change the image size. Step two is go to Save for Web, or you can do that image size reduction in the Save for Web dialog box, which is very handy. This has been Curtis Stage Tutorials. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time.